Coach Bill Snyder's Kansas State Wildcats are looking to go 6-0 for the first time in 11 seasons on College Football Saturday, presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The Red Raider Nation is pumped up. Quarterback Seth Dagey racking up points and yards. Typical of the high-octane offense run by the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Today, in walks the 5-0 undefeated Road Warriors, the Kansas State Wildcats. And Coach Snyder's defense, the best in the Big 12. K-State can score points as well, as the one-two punch of quarterback Colin Klein and running back John Hubert have already made their mark. It's a Big 12 conference battle. 18th ranked Kansas State and the high-scoring Texas Tech Red Raiders just light the fuse. Welcome to Jones AT&T Stadium for Big 12 College Football Saturday, all presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. As tonight, the 18th-ranked Kansas State Wildcats match up with the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. And as we look at the Big 12 standings, well, we're going to watch one of the undefeated to the Big 12 tonight, the Wildcats of Kansas State, Oklahoma playing later tonight in Lawrence, Kansas. Hi, everybody. Joel Myers alongside Joel Klatt, and welcome to Lubbock. Well, K-State coming in, one of the biggest surprises, Joel, in the Big 12 so far this season. They are a much better group defensively than we saw last year, and offensively, a patient lot led by quarterback Colin Klein. Well, and I like Colin Klein a lot because this guy starts with decision-making. He's a very smart football player with a high football IQ. In the run game, he's asked to make a lot of decisions. Those decisions affect the leverage of the offense against the defense, and he's done a sensational job during the course of this season. He's carried the ball 115 times. That tells me that this is a tough player. He invites contact. He's 6'5", 230 pounds. He's tough. He plays very clean football, and he doesn't turn the ball over. In fact, this team, I would say, takes the identity of their starting quarterback. Well, not much has changed here in Lubbock. In fact, the Red Raiders of Texas Tech come in ranked seventh in total offense in the nation, and they are led by one of the most explosive quarterbacks in the country, throwing the football in Seth Dagey. This is his first real consistent playing time since he was a sophomore in high school. He tore his knee up as a junior, tore his knee up as a senior in high school, and then he sat behind some very good quarterbacks here in Lubbock, and now he's gotten his chance to throw the ball around the lot for the Red Raiders. 71% completion percent 17 touchdowns and only one interception. He's a coach's kid. He's very smart and he's very tough. It's kind of the same old thing for Red Raider football. Three touchdown passes in each one of his games this season, including 40 of 44 for an NCAA completion percentage record against New Mexico. This guy can throw it. Sometimes it feels like you'll never find the one God intended for you. But that person is out there and Christian Mingle. the field and we join Jim Knox. Knox All right, coach, going up against the undefeated Kansas State. Their bread and butter's on the ground game. They're averaging 208 yards per game. How do you slow that down? Well, we're going to put more on the line of scrimmage than we have in the past. They do a good job, though, of running the option if you overload. So we're going to have to tackle well. We're going to, have to play good on first down. we got to get them in a passing situation. They don't like to throw it that much. They'll take some shots. They're going to try to keep our offense off the field, but we're going to have to tackle much better, and we've got to play well on first down. Best of luck, Coach. Thank you. Joel. All right, thanks, Jim. Bill Snyder, third year back after taking a sabbatical. Head coach of Kansas State, their all-time winning as coach. 89 to 2005, and then came back for the 2009 season, and are they lucky to have him back in Manhattan, Kansas? Back deep, it is going to be Ben McRoy. One of the very best in the Big 12 and the nation on kick returns, along with Austin Zuzalek and Anthony Cantelli. We'll kick it away, and Joel, I know you want to play. It's 80 degrees on a Saturday night in Lubbock. There could not be a more perfect night to play football than this. Here we go. Good to have you with us in Lubbock, Texas, West Texas. They don't like their football. They live it. They love it. It is religion back here. 
And out of bounds it goes. So Texas Tech is going to have a K State won the toss and decided that they wanted their defense on the field first. So the offensive line will count as playing with a torn ACL. What Not a great bad. story. Tore his ACL in fall camp and he's out there. He taped it up, braced it up, ready to go. And then Eric Ward, because Eric Stevens, the starting running back, tore his knee up a week ago, Eric Ward will be asked to do a lot of things in the pass game for Seth Dagey. So Eric Ward is going to be on the top of your screen. Trips on the wide side. And they're going to start. Aaron Crawford in the back keep field for Eric Stevens. It's Crawford. And not much room and great recovery. On the outside, Trey Walker, former Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week after their win over Miami. Trey Walker, a very good player. He's a sophomore, 21 tackles so far on the season. Now, the tempo offense of Seth Dakey and Texas Tech. Limiting personnel situations and substitutions for defensive reasons for K-State underneath in and out of the hands of his intended target Cornelius Douglas now defensively we have a second Volker is going to be the defensive end and I say a second the way they'd like to snap it junior college player he walked on to Kansas State and he's got four sacks on the year Arthur Brown transfer from Miami very good and then Ty Zimmerman last year was a freshman All-American it'll be a third and ten early Marquez in motion. Ton of time for Dagey. And it's picked and it's going the other way for six. Touchdown, Nigel Malone. That makes it four of the first five plus games for Nigel Malone. And I'm talking about interception. Boy, do they capitalize on mistakes. Nigel Malone read Seth Dagey's eyes the entire time. He jumps the route. Wasn't even the player he lined up over. Jumps the route, and that's as easy of a pick six as you're going to ever find Seth Dagey's second interception of the year. That's all, but it goes for six early for Kansas State. Cam Kelly puts it through for a perfect beginning. So Kansas State, 37 seconds into the game, they knew what they were doing when they won the coin toss and said, we want our D on the field first. A rare mistake, only the second interception of the season for Seth Dagey. And it's Kansas State up early. Well, right away, Seth Dagey. Man, the Red Raiders are going to get the football back 37 seconds into the contest. As Nigel Malone, if you joined us a split second late, you missed it. A touchdown off a pick for Malone. That's his fourth interception already this season. He's from Manteca, California, and another one of those guys that transferred in from the City College of San Francisco. Kansas State under Bill Snyder plays such a simple defense. They just play base defense, cover four all the time. Nigel Malone took advantage. Cantelli with a line drive, trying to take McRoy out of it, and he does. He's seventh in the nation in kick returns. And look back on the pick. Another basic defense from Kansas State. Malone's at the top of your screen, and he just shuffles, shuffles, baits him into it. Actually, this was the first play of the game on just the run play, but that's the exact same defense that they ran on this play, the second play of the game. Dagey was trying to go out to the true freshman, Bradley Marquez, and that's when Malone was able to step in front, intercept it, and go for six. They're going to be in that defense, Joel, all day long. So they're barely in their seats, so you can't say they're stunned. That's right. They're just arriving. Good point. An early lead for K-State. They already won a big one on the road this year, don't forget. And upset on the road earlier in the season. It's dumped off and it's complete underneath as they go to Adam James. Wide receiver, kind of a hybrid and a tight end, the way they set things up. But the core's like game plan. Well, for Texas Tech, it's Dagey's show. With Eric Stevens out, he's got to be great. you got to spread the ball around, and then the defense has to grow up quick. They're very young. Two true freshmen will at times be linebackers for them on the field, Joel. Nothing doing that time once again for Aaron Crawford, the senior. And his task, try to do something that Eric Stevens was doing already at a very high level. Stevens out, rest of the year. Unfortunately, a knee injury on a play that was already whistled dead, but the activity continued. And a strange situation at the end of the play. So he's lost now for the Red Raiders, who kept everybody honest with a good running game. Offside, free down. Let's see if Dagey can capitalize. Nope. He'll take the free five, though, as he's dropped close to the line of scrimmage by By Latui. Junior from Offside. Salt Lake City. And number 57 of the defense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Volker trying to get a quick jump. They're going to try to 
draw Jordan Volker off sides, which they were able to do on that down. He's got five tackles for loss, four sacks. The walk-on player, high motor, and gets a great jump off the ball. Texas Tech takes advantage for a free five yards. It'll be Crawford, good hole up the middle, and lunges close to the marker on first and five. Gets four. Well, what I was talking about with Eric Stevens and, and what he was doing for this team and making it easy on Seth Daggy as well. They, I mean, they were running the ball so effectively for the first time ever here in Lubbock. Eric Stevens was a great player. Now, Daggy going for the bundle and overshooting his intended target. He tried to get it downfield for Alex Torres, the junior from El Paso. But looking back on how it developed, I said, a strange situation at the end of a dead play. Well, and you can see the momentum for the Texas A&M player just continued. And Stevens was just in an awkward position. You hate to see that for such a great player and a big part of this Red Raider offense. Caught a third in the yard. Moved the eighth back in motion. And Crawford, indecision cost to give the K-State defense credit though the penetration and Arthur Brown up the middle a big part of that the junior from Wichita and he's been a big part of their resurgence defensively they've been so good first in total defense in this Big 12 conference and they get off the field early against Texas Tech already a defensive touchdown and now getting off the field forcing a punt I love what I see from the Wildcats so far Ryan Erksleben will punt it away They'll use the clock. K-State from the 12. And a little lane over to the right side, but good play again. He's brought down. Tremaine Thompson brought it down, but Marquez caught up with him. The wide receiver gets another wide receiver on special teams play. Back to Lubbock. Just about three minutes into the contest, Kansas State getting the ball for the first time offensively. They've got a defensive touchdown. We'll talk about that. And now offensively, Colin Klein is going to be protected by Clyde Opner, the right tackle, the offensive line. He's the most experienced one up front, Joel. Yeah, and John Hubert in the backfield, Joel, he's the guy that has to take some of those carries away from Colin Klein, the quarterback. Hubert, sixth leading rusher in the Big 12 Conference. Colin Klein, the seventh leading rusher in the Big 12 Conference. Their game is on the ground. They both average just about 94 yards per carry. So now a 4-2-5 defense against a team that likes to run the football. An interesting contrast tonight, love it. Wade Wilson setting up and a change right away. Klein, he wanted to throw it, and he will. It's an afterthought, but it's a good one to Tyler Lockett, the true freshman. His dad, Kevin, the all-time Wildcat leading receiver. Now defensively for Texas Tech. Kerry Hyder, he's a disruptive sort, isn't he? Undersized but quick, and he's got to play great against that running game, and so does Blake Dees. He's a true freshman, got to play strong. Cody Davis in the back end, a very good player. He's going to have some opportunities against Colin Klein in the pass game. That's a nice ad lib by Colin Klein to find Lockett. He didn't panic, did he? He'll keep it in his own read, and he'll be driven down. It's Leon Mackey, the defensive end, holding containment on that side. We're going to try the zone read. Colin Klein makes a terrific read off the defensive end. Because the defensive end pinches down the line, he goes ahead and pulls it. Ends up getting stopped by that very player anyways. But Colin Klein knows that sometimes the best decision is to take it for no yards, especially if your running back is going to go for minus four. He's got Hubert in the backfield on a third down. Batted up in the air and timed beautifully. That's Scott Smith, the senior from Hawaii, on the other side of the defensive end. They are so happy to have Scott Smith back. Back after a suspension and playing very well. This defense will be much different with him on the edge. The right side of your screen, Kansas State's trying to cut him. You side Offner on the ground trying to cut Scott Smith. Didn't bite. Hands on the offensive lineman. Gets his hands up. Bats it down. Door, a junior from Katie, will punt it away to Austin Susana. And let's see about the exchange field position-wise. They go after it. Just barely missed getting the Door's punt. Fair catch called for. 
man, when we come back, Texas Tech is going to have it down by seven for the third time. They'll have it. They'll have it in good shape at their own 35. He's struggling a little bit this year, Joel. Just a little. <laughs> Quick with bubble screen. And talk about the resiliency. I mean, getting out there and bringing down the wide receiver as it's taken in over there by Eric Ward. But Zimmerman, and it'll look like five to ten yards. Zimmerman gets him after three or four. Nothing for Crawford. Boy, the running game. Five carries, eight yards for the running game right now. You think they missed Stevens early? Well, it's going to be tough because Kansas State obviously faces their offense every day in practice. Iron sharpens iron. A good running game breeds a good defensive run game. That's what you're seeing for Kansas State so far. So slow start offensively for the Red Raiders, but give the Wildcats credit. Now Deggy, ton of time, perfect timing. Adam James first down, second first down of the game for the Red Raiders, and in K-State territory for the first time. James is going to have to have a big game because they are playing off. It is basic, basic defense with two free safeties way back. James right over the middle. You see all the free space that he has. Seth Deggy finds him easily. We're going the other way, trying to make it work and hanging on for dear life. The defensive back on that side, Alan Chapman, gets Swindoll. Good play by Chapman. Yeah, Chapman normally just the nickelback, but he'll play almost every snap tonight versus the spread sets of Texas Tech. Speaking of spreads, man, do they get you out. They had three up top, wide side of the field. Go that direction, inside the 20, it's complete. Five, touchdown. Taken in by Douglas. Red Raiders with a flag on the play. Was an offsides, the decline. Seth Daigie comes right back after throwing the interception for the touchdown earlier today. Finds Douglas right over the middle for the strike and the six points. It's a little more than five minutes in. Cantelli in for the point after. Make it Donnie Corona, rather. The senior from Beaumont in for the point after try. And we are all even. So at 9.47 to play, they get a score for the first time after giving one up offensively. Seth Dickey is just forcing the safeties off the hash with his eyes. Tyson Hartman, number two, was just way out of position. You see Dickey looking all the way to his left. That forces Tyson Hartman, number two, off the hash and allows Douglas a free seam down the middle of the football field. Great answer from Texas Tech. Their third series of the game. And, and as Tommy Tuberville told us, and you could really see there, there was no pressure on Daggy. But Daggy's a warrior, and he hangs in there. And as Tommy Tuberville said, he's got the respect of the offensive line because he's iced up after games. If he can sit like that with no pressure all day long, this is going to be a long day for Kansas State's defense because they do play such a safe defense, always with two safeties back. Over the middle is going to be wide open for Tommy Tuberville and Seth Daggy. Jim Knox, what's going on down there? Joel Seth Degan continues to get congratulations. I talked to him before the game. Believe it or not, I asked him, who do you pat in your game after? He didn't say uh, Tom Brady, Drew Brees, or even Joel Clack. He said Cliff Kingsbury, of all people, one of the great quarterbacks here at Texas Tech. All right, San Antonio kick Cliff Kingsbury. It's about five yards into the end zone, and Swindoll will stay there. <laughs> now out of the gun. Colin Klein, can they get the ground game going? This is a team that leads the nation in time of possession because they do run the football. Klein on the edge and forced out. Good pressure once again, though. And pushing him was Scott Smith to the boundary. Tremaine Thompson on the top of your screen. Top of the formation was wide open, and Klein, that's about the time that he had to scramble out, never was able to set his feet and get the ball down the field, but that running game has allowed them to chew up clock. 35-57, time of possession per game. It's a big reason why their defense has been so successful as well. Right, they're not on the field. It's second and long. Back to scramble by Klein. Hubert readjusts. Little delay in counteraction. But it turned it in. Man. Play was busted up early, a gain of only one. 
And now third and about six. Coors like game plan for K-State. They have to limit the possessions of Texas Tech. You already saw them get the pick six and force a punt. Three possessions for Tech so far, one touchdown. They got to stay basic on defense, make them go 80 yards in 10 or 13 plays, and then no mistakes on offense. No turnovers and limit the penalties. So now third and six. Second series of the game offensively for Kansas State. They look for their first first down. Four-man rush. Underneath and wide of the intended target, Thompson. It was available, too. And he had good protection. Was able to step into that throw, and it just sailed on him a little bit outside of Thompson's reach. Klein's going to have to make some plays on third down to keep his offense on the field. Already a couple of third failed down conversions now for the Wildcats. Zuzadek back and Joel field position so important for a Kansas State team. Uh, especially if they've got to play catch up and, and right now it's even but it looks like barring a turnover Texas Tech is going to have good field position again. Doyle will punt it inside his own 15. Zuzalek he doesn't call for the fair catch still he's got it at about the 40 yard line so two big plays one defensively for K-State offensively for Texas Tech yeah it started with Nigel Malone picking off Seth Dagey on the second play from scrimmage for Texas Tech just sat on the route steps in front and he goes to the end zone but Texas Tech on their third possession they got some things going over the middle of the field K-State jumped off sides Dagey had a free play finds Douglas down the seam that's how they got on the board so Dagey now finding some rhythm this is the next series. This is the fourth series for Texas Tech. They found some success over the middle. Let's see how Kansas State reacts to that success for the Red Raiders. Empty backfield. Five set up at receiver. Man, a little cross in the flat. And way too easy for a gain of about 15. So right away, Texas Tech showing what they can do. If you can't get to Seth Dagey and force him to throw the ball quickly, it's going to be a long day. The runoffs of the outside receivers leave big seams in the underneath for the running backs and tight ends. That was Ben McRoy, and very rarely do they bring him out in those situations. But it worked. Underneath, it works again. And another first down on a gain of 11. So they bring it in with Alex Torres, his second grab of the game. Kansas State has sat in zone every play so far of this football game. They're going to have to mix this up and play some man coverage at some point. Tripped up out of the backfield. Man, they're mixing things up now as the running back that time was DeAndre Washington. So Washington, he's their fastest running back, a true freshman out of Missouri City, Texas. Nagy on the quick count. Ton of time. Washington can't make a miss. But why? Why? It's Arthur Brown. That's why. That's he's, he's that quick. And that's exactly what Kansas State wants him to do: is force the check down and allow Arthur Brown a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to force a third down. Now Kansas State an opportunity on third down to force a field goal or get off the field. Eight of eleven, Seth Daggy in the passing department. He sits seven straight. So not exactly overwhelmed by throwing a pick early in the game. He's bounced back. It'll be third and short. Third and about five. Looks one way, bubble screen the other way, and throws it away. And that's a break because Washington was well covered. And a great job by Kansas State of getting off the field, forcing a kick, whether it's a field goal or a punt. Nice job from Kansas State there because Texas Tech had things rolling on that series for the first few plays. Donnie Corona is going to try a 48-yard field goal academic all big 12 last year he's six of eight so far this season he has a 49 yarder one of his six makes exchange is good and it's blocked no shot kansas state like virginia tech one of the best teams in the nation when it comes to special teams play bill right up the gut bill snyder's teams are always great at things that they can control Joel, special teams penalties lining up correctly all the things that they have control over, they're terrific at. And again, right up the middle, finds a seam, goes in and blocks it. It's big number 94 gets in there for the block. Terrific job by Rafael Guidry, a senior from Texas City, Texas, to get the block and a huge momentum swing for Kansas State. 
And now they get it back, the Wildcats, at their own 28. We're still even at 7 with 6.52 to play in the first 15. Hubert. They have not been able to get him off early, Joel. So a good job. And we talk about a defense that's really schemed towards defending the pass more than the run. And they gave up 205 yards a week ago on the ground to Texas A&M. And you can clearly see where the emphasis was for the Red Raiders in practice this week. Stopping the run. And it starts up front. The defensive line right now winning the line of scrimmage. It'll be second and eight from the 30. Harper one side. Lock at the other. And in the zone read, they wrestle Hubert down very quickly. A guy that also averages, as you mentioned, 94 a game. So he slugs it out to the 34. And already what we're seeing is Texas Tech be more basic on defense than they have during the course of this season. It's a more of an exotic scheme. 4-2-5, they play with five defensive backs, but they're lining up in a traditional 4-3 set, trying to allow these players to play fast on third down. They're trying to convert their first third down of the contest and also pick up their first first down. They're in good shape, tied at seven without a first down of the game yet. Almost 10 minutes gone by. It'll be Connor Klein calling his own number. He's got it. They can't do it, I will. Colin Klein read it beautifully. Anytime that the quarterback is going to run it directly with a lead blocker, you're going to have numbers as an offense. Uses number 33, John Hubert, as his lead blocker. How about the block from the center there? Big number 50, actually left guard Nick Pitts gets out there, finds the linebacker, clears the hole. Klein finds himself past the chains for a first down. And the one thing Bill Snyder emphasized to us about Colin Klein was his toughness. And now, all of a sudden, a wildcat in the backfield. It's a direct snap, and it goes to the running back. Not much doing, though. Maybe two yards by Peace, the backup, Angelo Peace, Jr. from Georgia. Kansas State is going to have to throw the ball down the field to try to get this defense out of the run box. Bill Snyder knows that right now. He's going to have to have Colin Klein throw the ball accurately down the field, or else Texas Tech is going to continue to sit there with eight, nine guys close to the line of scrimmage. Right, and we talked about making Colin Klein throw the ball over their head, or at least attempt to. Another wild wildcat again. Colin Klein flanking it out to the top of your screen. It'll be peace. And he's got it across the 45. Now, it'll be another third down. Third to about six. Hubert stays with Klein in the backfield. Yeah. Hits him right at the marker. It's a first down taken in once again on that side by Tremaine Thompson. Nice throw by Colin Klein Good coverage, on the outside. It? it was great coverage, but it was even better throw. Accuracy always beats good coverage. Terrific coverage by the corner, but he was able to hit him right out of his break, right on the chest. That's called framing him up, throwing it right on the frame of the wide receiver. Good throw by Colin Klein. So back to back first downs. And across the midfield strike. Hubert waves his way for a top three. They sent Lockett just to plant a seed for down the road on the reverse as Bush was in on the stop. So let's see if Kansas State can control the football, what they've done so well over the first five games of the season. This is the patented Kansas State drive. It feels like they've been on the field forever. Texas Tech's just sitting on the sidelines offensively right now. And, and Joel, that's why they've got to have a high percentage on third downs. Because they don't have big plays. They don't have the, the explosives that everybody says 20 or more yards. Second and seven. Nice play fake by Colin Klein. And throws it at the feet of his tight end. 6'8", 270 pound Andre McDonald. Like to see him make a shoestring catch. <laughs> that's, that's a long way to go down <laughs> for McDonald. But that's not a bad burn. You know, Colin Klein, when your tight end is covered that well, you don't want to give him an opportunity for a tipped ball. The ball goes up in the air for an interception. Might as well just burn it at his feet. Live to play another down for a third down opportunity. So they've converted on their last two third downs. On third and seven. Good pocket protection off the fingertips of the big guy once again. He was going for McDonald. 
And he's forcing it on a deflection like that. There wasn't somebody behind him to pick it. Texas Tech did a great job on the last play of forcing the third and long. Colin Klein lets this sail just too high for Andre McDonald. But the reason that they're in that situation is because it was a third and seven rather than a third and four. Zuzanik waiting for the punt once again. Not much wind tonight, which is rare for West Texas. There's nothing to block the wind. And that's concentration. Surrounded. He's got it at about the 13. Good job by Dora, though, with the hang time. Now, what a change in field position. The defense of Kansas State, the most improved area of their team. I mean, what a change for them from last year to this year. It starts with the run game. You've got to stop the run. They've been able to do that. Total defense, you see the disparity there from last year to this year. And then the points, 29 to 16. Overall total defense, Joel, they're the number one defense in the conference right now, and you can see why. Very basic, and they force you to execute down the field. It'll be Crawford. Or check that. Yeah, Crawford out of the backfield. Little jump cut over to the right. Gets it up to 15. After all is said and done, only a gain of two, though, as Trey Walker got over there. This defensive line has been so good. Volker, Kibble, Latui, and Williams all transfers from junior college, and they've come in right away and been a force. And, and Volker has been a force as a former walk-on. Gagey has time of the comeback route. Man is complete. Close to the first down. It'll depend on where they mark it. As it's brought in by Eric Ward. A sophomore from Wichita Falls. Meshack Wils, uh, Williams, excuse me, number 42, had his target, the bullseye, right on Seth Dagg. He was just a hair late. Crawford, a little misdirection, lunges for about two. And our apologies for one of our microphones picking up anything down in the field you might have heard. It was definitely down in the field. It didn't come from the booth. It's tied at seven with 95 seconds and counting left in the first quarter. The tempo that we've seen over a decade now. The rhythm offense of Texas Tech. Ton of time for Seth Dagey. Yeah, his receivers read it perfectly, don't they? Coming back once again, different receiver. It's Terrell Miller this time, the sophomore from New Orleans. And a terrific timing route. The timing between the receivers and Seth Dagey is impeccable. You can see the product of throwing the ball for years and years and years. Marcus Kennard, number 88, comes back perfectly out of his break. So Daggy, who is now 10 of 14, has gone to eight different receivers already. Little delay, and one of the better runs as they get it from McRoy. Or make it DeAndre Washington. First 10 line is all brought to you by Mazda. So in the final minute, the wild start to the contrast. First pass by Daggy going the other way for a touchdown, and concentration, I guess. It's complete after a bobble by Eric Ward. And he's got the first down. Yeah, that was Trey Walker from his outside linebacker spot running out, trying to run underneath this route. Pops the ball out of Ward's hand. Terrific concentration from Ward to bring that back in. Going for the bubble screen again. And not much available. Boy, the defense can recover. Torres on the outside, but give K-State credit. A lot of credit because they're forcing Texas Tech to snap the ball more than they're used to. Remember, they're used to scoring within about six plays. Defenses will create vulnerabilities, and they'll go down the field. Kansas State forcing them to snap it over and over. Flag is down, going for the bundle. Jump ball inside the 10. It's complete. What a grab by Swindoll. It looked like it could have been offside. Offside by the defense. The penalty's declined. It's a first down. That's Tremaine Swindoll, a senior from Oklahoma City. Well, and now twice. Texas Tech and Seth Dagey right there over the ball. The nose tackle jumps for Kansas State, drives the coach nuts. But Seth Dagey twice now has realized that he's had a flag on the ground and a free play, and he's gone down the field. Won the touchdown to Douglas, and now down the, down the seam, down the sideline to Eric Ward. Puts the ball first and 10 inside the 10. So after the junior 
from Wolford, Texas. Seth Dagey had a disastrous start. He's recovered pretty nicely, and they're driving first to go when we come back for the Red Raiders. You're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. West Texas, Joel Myers, Joel Klett, Jim Knox, we're in Lubbock. Last snap before we went away at the end of the quarter, Joel. This is a terrific job of recognition. Seth Dick, he recognizes the blitz and the safety moving to the middle of the field, and he knows that Allen Chapman is one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with his receiver, Eric Ward. He looks off the safety and then goes right to the one-on-one -on -one coverage and then puts the ball high for Ward to go up and get it. At, the, at its tallest point against the shorter corner, Alan Chapman only 5'11", 180 pounds. So a terrific job by Seth Deggie of recognition and then just giving the wide receiver an opportunity to catch the ball, Joel. These guys are athletic. This is what they came to Lubbock to do. And you got to give them the opportunity, and Deggie did on the last play. And they have a missed beat under Tommy Tuberville as That's well. Right. It's been a seamless transition because they got a guy that's a pro and has been successful elsewhere. Going way back to his days with Jimmy Johnson in Miami as the defensive assistant. It's first to go from the seven at the first snap of the second quarter. Ton of time for Deggy. Set up a lawn chair back there. It's thrown wide of Torres. And it's going to be second and goal. Can't ask for much more, though, from your offensive line. Now, they have one miss in the red zone. 25 of the 28 scores are touchdowns. The one miss, they ran out the clock against Kansas. On the give, diving touchdown, DeAndre Washington. This is the guy I thought would carry the load in Eric Stevens' absence. The true freshman, DeAndre Washington, out of Missouri City, Texas, carry over the left tackle, puts it into the end zone. It's Corona for the point after. So the last 14 points of the game from the Red Raiders, and they have dominated the proceeding so far. The only points for K-State came from their defense as Texas Tech has their first lead of the game. First and goal inside the 10, and then the true freshman, the fastest guy on the field when he's in the game, DeAndre Washington, finds himself in the end zone. He's only 5'7". 182 pounds, but a bright future here with the Red Raiders. So 10 plays, 87 yards. That's what Kansas State wants to force them to do is snap it about 10 times, but they just executed better than the Wildcats found themselves in the end zone. Lockett waiting back deep, along with Tremaine Thompson. So 14 to 7 lead for the Red Raiders. And a returnable one down the middle. It'll be Lockett from the one. Nice lane over to the right side. Angles it beautifully up the middle. He might go the distance. Do they have an angle? He's run away, completely run away from them. Lockett's in. Touchdown, K-State. Special team so big once again. A block field goal. And now a kick return for a score. Ninety-nine yards for Tyler Lockett. Decisiveness in the kick return. Joel, I always say it's one of the best traits that a returner can have. He follows his blockers, and then when he sees the lane, bang, right there. He cuts back, and he's north and south, straight up the field, and now it's all about speed. Angles away from the defense. The kick return, kick, kickoff team, and finds himself in the end zone. What a great return from Lockett. And then they go and miss the extra point. A rarity. So, Cantelli cannot tie it up. It's wide left on an extra point. 14-32 left in the first half. A wild start as K-State doesn't have much offensively, but they're right where they want to be. A frown. Darman huskrat in sulig dag. Och vårt innersta toms på alla lester. FXX.
the personal foul, unnecessary roughness by number 11 of the defense. It's half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. That's Leon Mackey, the defensive end. Leon Mackey with some extracurricular. He's just beyond McDonald. You see right at the end, that's number 50. Nick Pitts, the left guard, just too much right in front of the official, draws the penalty. Exactly what Kansas State wanted. First and goal inside the five with some momentum and rhythm in that running game. Trying to get the first points of the night offensively. Option roll, Klein lunges inside the one. He's a running quarterback, more than a passing quarterback. He is seventh overall. That's quarterbacks, tailbacks, you name it, anything you want. Seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. And what a great kid. Had an opportunity yesterday, Joel, with you and, and Jim Knox and all of us on the production team to sit and talk with Colin Klein, a terrific individual and a tough kid. 6'5", 230, you'd think he's a pocket passer. He's a running quarterback first, averaging over four yards a carry this season. And you don't have to talk to his, his high school coach, I guess. He was homeschooled. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he's from Loveland, Colorado. It'll be second and goal. And up the middle, he's in. Touchdown, K-State. Took a while, but he was there. So Colin Klein. Puts K-State up again. And I say again because 37 seconds into the game, they led on an interception return for a score by Nigel Malone. At 230 pounds, why not get by behind your big offensive line? Look at him, foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder. Klein's not even touched by a black jersey. Just fits behind all that white and gets it into the end zone. Now, let's see if they can negotiate the extra point. Last one was hooked wide left. It was hooking, but it made it through. And it's a six-point lead for the Wildcats, trying to go 6-0. 4.54 left in the half, and K-State regains the advantage. Shouldn't be surprised. That's the blueprint for yes. Bill Snyder. Uh, he doesn't mind if they're doubled up in yards right now. Nine plays, 46 yards on the last drive. Set up by Gidry's second block field goal of the night. It'll be taken by McRoy. Back at about the five. And a huge hole up the middle. Closes in a hurry near the 28. 4.50 left in the half. And a little quick out. Take it in as it's a gain of about seven or eight by Swindle. Well, he's already thrown 27 passes, 66 balls thrown last week, but that's they're trailing big against A&M and then tried to make the comeback. It's not a large deficit. Let's see if the running game is going to be a factor. Yeah, it's going to be a factor for a first down. And what a landing that time. Looked like a gymnast, didn't he, Aaron Crawford? <laughs> Aaron Crawford, very good back. He's not Eric Stevens, but he's a very good back. Crawford and DeAndre Washington, who we've already seen in the end zone tonight, very capable backups for Eric Stevens. So first down. And again, a bullet. Good grab. And good yardage. It's taken in by Torres. Boy, the velocity. Yeah, I like Seth Dagey and his presence in the pocket. Watch how he steps up, steps through his drop, and then delivers the ball accurately down the field. Yeah. Scrambling over to the left side. Good run into the secondary. Look out. Crawford into the secondary. Touchdown, Texas Tech. yards on the carry for Aaron Crawford do you want to go for two the way their kicking game has worked extra point try coming up for Corona took a long time to regain the lead four plays 72 yards covered in exactly 60 seconds that is Texas Tech football quick strike offense 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 
Boy, they have got some players. Remember, Eric Stevens goes down a week ago. He's their number one back. This is their backup, Aaron Crawford. And how about this run? Good balance and vision, finding the hole, and then the cutback late to get himself into the end zone. This is not easy to do against Kansas State because Kansas State normally very sound against the run. Very base defense that they throw out there. Not a lot of man coverage, which you see long runs against Joel. And you got to remember that Crawford, he's a senior from Memphis. His dad played college ball at Memphis State in the old days, before it was the University of Memphis. He figures going into the season, how many touches do I get my senior year because of Stevens? He only had eight carries coming into tonight's ball game on the year. Now he's going to be asked to do much more with Stevens out. Deliver some fireworks there on a 51-yard touchdown run. That'll help your average. He's got 76 yards already on the ground. Inside of four. And it'll be stained in the end zone. So K-State has it at their own 20, down by one. Jim Knox. Tell you what, Joel, this is a back and forth game. You don't want to miss the second half. Homecoming in Lubbock, so the 12th man could be the difference, like Jane Kirkenell, 1939 cheerleader. Go for it, Jane. 90 years young right there. Joel Clack couldn't do that in his heydays, guys. <laughs> Knox, don't leave. That's Please help her up, Jim. <laughs> oh. I think I just tore my hamstring. It's a one-point game. It hurt up here. <laughs> 355 left in the half. Now the scoreboard tells the whole story as you look at the differential. <laughs> the explosiveness of Texas Tech means nothing. They've been hurt on specials and right out of it. A, that's rare for K-State, a delay of game. It's a five-yard penalty. So they've had three offsides and a delay of game. They normally snap it inside of 10 seconds, but that wasn't anything other than Colin Klein didn't look up to the play clock. Sometimes that does happen to quarterbacks when they're this far into their own end at the 15-yard line. You just forget about looking that far into your end zone. Now out of the gun. It's Hubert. And he won't make it back to the line. Good penetration up front. Now, first one there, and cleaning up, it was Trey Porter. This but the guy that torpedoed it was Dartuan Bush. And Dartuan Bush is feeding off of the momentum created by that long run from their offense. This is what Kansas State is not built for. They're built to take the momentum away from teams with long drives and running the ball methodically down the field. Very tough for them when the defense gets the momentum and is playing fast. Coaches say when you're off schedule, it really hurts, and that's the case now. For Kansas State, shovel and a good open field play for Hubert. Making a miss across the 25 and a manageable third down coming up now. Great play call. Terrific play call by Dana Dimmel in his 14th season with Bill Snyder as the offensive coordinator. The shovel, we've seen it twice today. I love how Colin Klein sells it to the left. Really sells it looking all the way outside. Then shovels underneath the Hubert. And Hubert does a great job of getting up there, making this a manageable third down. They've hit half of their third down drive so far. Out of the gun, needs five. Pocket holds up, and it's deflected. Good play underneath. He was trying to get it to Chris Harper, but it was deflected before it ever came close. Terrence Bullitt, number one, fell underneath that route. Terrific defense in anticipation of where they were trying to go. They were trying to throw that curl about 10 yards deep. Falls underneath it, bats it away. So a three and out, and an opportunity now for Texas Tech to extend the lead. Zuzelik, they have a chance to return one finally. Real good hang time for Dora. And ooh, hard hit, and leading with his helmet brings a flag. It was simultaneous on the catch by Zuzelik and the hit. There's no halo rule in college football anymore. You can be as close to him as possible. You can hit him right when he touches the ball. Speaking of the returner, Zuzala. A personal foul by number 22 of the kicking team. It's a 15-yard penalty, and it's a first down. 
It's Thomas Ferguson. And was it the use of the helmet? Yes. See how his head goes down, yeah. Joel, and targets him high. How about the helmet? So tough. This is one of the toughest things to do in all of football. Be one of the gunners on the punt team. The timing, but you see there, that, that's the look that the official had, and it's clear from that look that it's going to draw a flag. Out to the 45. After the mark off of 15. So a short field now with 2.28 to play in the half. Good pocket protection again. Man, close to the first down on the grab. As once again, they hit Ward. That's been his favorite target here in the first half. First and 10 line is brought to you by Mazda. It won't be up long because the ball is moving quickly with Texas Tech. Man, not that quickly. Kansas State with a good penetration on Crawford. It was Gidry getting into the backfield. Now, timeout has been taken with 2.02 to play. And that is going to be the first timeout taken by Texas Tech. So, I, a third down and about six when they do put it back into play. The frustration right now right now is sitting with Texas Tech. Even though they're ahead in this ballgame, 21 to 20, it's been exactly what Bill Snyder wants, not what Tommy Tuberville wants. Tommy Tuberville wanted this to be an up-and-down football game. His offense on the field, he's had that. But his special teams has let him down because Bill Snyder's special teams have blocked two field goals and returned a kick for a touchdown. That's the reason Bill Snyder finds himself undefeated and atop the Big 12 standings. Well, you're talking about Lockett, who had the 99-yard kick return. Nigel Malone took in an interception for a seven. And as we look at the Big 12 standings, Oklahoma State a winner by 12 today at Texas in Austin. Got Kansas it. State coming in undefeated like Oklahoma is going into Lawrence today. Yeah, you got to think Oklahoma's going to win that game, so Kansas State trying to keep pace with the Cowboys and the Sooners. Now third and six. They bring more as Daggy a single coverage, and he's got a first down going to Alex Torres. But they gambled on the outside, brought the extra pass rush, single coverage. Arthur Brown is coming on a bit of a delayed blitz. And Seth Daigie is so patient in the pocket, he knows he's going to get hit, but allows his receiver the opportunity to come open late over the middle. What great poise from Daigie in the pocket. It's complete to the 35. Daigie again. And dropped as it was available. DeAndre Washington. He's done a lot of good things tonight. And, and that was just resourcefulness by Daigie. He was ready to throw the ball away. Yeah, just manipulating the pocket a little bit to find those extra seconds back there to try to find an open receiver. Very smart from Seth Daigie. So 31, make it 32 after that last one. 32 passes thrown by Daigie in the first half alone. Good pocket protection. And a good grab by Ward. He's short of the first down by about three. They wouldn't have to try another field goal, would they? Better block Gidry if that happens. Here's Ward working a curl route. Very easy against zone defense. You see him sit. He didn't float anywhere. That's exactly what you want your receiver to do from a quarterback standpoint versus zone. Give you the numbers. Sit down. Let me throw you the football. And frame Calls you up. their second time out of the half. Hit you right on the chest. Out. And as we watched film yesterday of Kansas State defensively, they want to. You're not going to go over their head. No, exactly. They, it's in front of them. Going to try to keep everything in front. They're fine with you catching that 10-yard curl route. Remember, we've seen this all night long. Texas Tech between the 20s going up and down the field. They did block a couple of field goals, so Kansas State is able to get themselves into a kicking situation and then come up big on specials. And Bill Snyder just used a timeout for defensive reasons. So he stopped the clock at a third and three. There's Gidry, who's been... A big playmaker on special teams as well as getting to the backfield. Now, pocket collapsing, Daggy. Little dump off. Will Crawford get there? He's got the first down inside the 25 to the 21. And again, Daggy just didn't panic. In crucial situations, Kansas State is automatically going to that one person pressure and playing man to man behind him. Inside of a minute left. A lot of time for Texas Tech. Man, grab is made, first and goal, diving to the goal line. Did he get there? It looked like Ward was out of bounds, so they're going to say he was at about the two. 
But again, a nice strong throw. Great throw, good timing by the wide receiver coming back out of that break. There he is trying to tightrope. I think they're saying that left foot was the one out of bounds. They'll go in a hurry. And over to the left side. Slamming it. It'll be Williams down to the one. He is there. Kenny Williams is a short yarded back. His first carry, his first activity of the night. He stays in the backfield. And Daniel will keep it. He's in. Texas Tech touchdown. Texas Tech came back with the same play. Running backs going that way. As soon as the defensive end crashes down, Daigie goes on the outside. Easy read for Daigie, easy touchdown. Terrific job by Texas Tech. Easy has not been an operative term for the place kicker tonight, but Corona <laughs> drills it for the extra point. So now an eight-point lead with 35 seconds left in the half, and again, Daggy engineering it very efficiently and, and we talked about the patience and he never panics when he is in the pocket well it early in this game he threw that pick six I was wondering how he was going to come back and he has just been sensational during the course of this game Kansas State giving them those middle seams down the field he's thrown with great timing on the outside on the comeback routes giving his wide receivers a chance deep high letting them going up and get it and then decision making in the run game that defensive end crashes. Daigie walks into the end zone. 28 points. Even though Kansas State has done everything that they wanted to do so far in this game, Daigie has been so good, almost 300 yards. After that pick six early, boy, this offense, it hasn't been stopped except for a couple of blocks field goals. Yeah, they've made some mistakes, as you mentioned, and their own undoing has been special teams. Whether it's covering a kick or protecting on placements. All four touchdown drives by Tech. Typical. Under three minutes. And now the line drive. Right pass. The return man. Thompson. So 35 seconds left. Only one timeout on the board. And do they have a timeout remaining? Kansas State. Yes, one. But you got to believe they're headed to the locker room with an eight-point deficit. Yeah, they're not built to score in 35 seconds. I'll be shocked if they do anything except take a knee here. Well, they're going to line up in a regular formation. Probably give Hubert a chance in the run game. Sixth possession of the game for K-State. It's Hubert for five. And that should do it for the first half of play. So a wild one where special teams were critical for Kansas State because offensively they did not manufacture a lot. They had that short field after the block of the second field goal by Corona. Man, Colin Klein and Bill Snyder's squad made the most of it. A 46-yard field. And Colin Klein got into the end zone. Their only points offensively. So K-State in great shape when you consider Texas Tech has really marched up and down the field. We check in with Jim Knox. Knoxy. Thank you, Joel. Coach, you got to be pleased. You know, you take away those two block field goals. A few mistakes in the first half, but yeah, your offense is clicking. 296 total yards. Yeah, we can move the ball on just about anybody. We're just playing such a horrific special teams. I think we all noticed that. But, uh, you know, we we just got to keep our focus. They're doing a good job of turning their body and getting in on our field goals. We, we can correct that. The big thing we got to do is just keep our poise. And it looks like we did the first half. We usually play better the second half. Hopefully we do. I right, appreciate Thank the time, you. Coach. Halftime in Lubbock and Texas Tech leading Kansas State 28 to 20. When we return, we'll take you to the Coors Light Studio with Kevin Frazier and Marcus Allen right after this quick timeout. Stay with us. Twenty 
And welcome back once again. Joel Myers alongside Joel Klatt. A highly unusual first half, to say the least. But then everything kind of true to form for the Red Raiders down the stretch. It was special teams for Kansas State early. I mean, they were really the story for Kansas State. I thought that the, the defensive touchdown early in the game, Seth Daigie uncharacteristically throws an interception, only his second of the year. Malone takes it in for the score. And then the kickoff return. Lockett, the true freshman, the nice cutback. Good vision right there. He cuts back, takes it the distance. A very good speed. And then after that, Texas Tech, they fell into a rhythm. They were able to get Seth Dakey going over the middle of the field. That's where the vulnerabilities were for Kansas State. Douglas takes it in for a touchdown. That was the only touchdown that Dakey threw. But then late in the half, inside of a minute, Dakey on the zone read. It's not what they do all the time, but he executes it to perfection right there for a touchdown for the Red Raiders. So you look at the numbers and you figure K State's in great shape. 296 <laughs> through the air. To 49 passing yards, and you look at the overall total yardage between the two teams, and they're only down by eight. The special teams, as Joel mentioned, such a key factor once again for Bill Snyder's squad. Luckett back deep, along with Thompson. Now, as Tommy Tuberville told Jim Knox, they can get it straight when it comes to blocking for the field goals. Let's see what their adjustments are going to be. Luckett will take it. From the goal line. Ben spun around past the 20, up to the 23. Well, a huge disparity when you talk about the quarterbacks, but we knew that going in. Colin Klein was never going to be asked to sit there and get in a shootout with Seth Daigie. It just wasn't going to happen. Daigie, very special. 25 to 34 for 296. After that pick six, early second play of the game, he's been sensational. So now K State has it. Klein and the offense on the field from their own 23. They started to look better offensively in the second 15 minutes of play. Ton of time for Klein, and he goes to the big tight end. Travis Tannehill with his first grab at a first down. So a bit of a surprise throwing on first down to come out of the locker room. It was difficult for them early in the half in the first half to find some of those running lanes. And so early, you're already seeing a halftime adjustment from Bill Snyder says let's throw it and try to get him out of that run box so that we can run it later in the half. The game takes it for 15 to the 38. Good pocket protection. Shallow cross. It's Harper. And he's got another first down. So they've found some things obviously at halftime when they talked it over that they could do to, against the defense attack. And this is what they needed to do is get Chris Harper going. 19 catches for over 225 yards on the year. Over 10 on average. And you see his speed on that shallow cross. I like what Klein did with the ball placement, too. An opportunity to run after the catch. Big gain all the way to the 40-yard line. So two snaps, two passes for Colin Klein. Short ones. And they both work for big yardage. And uncovered. It's Lockett. A breakdown. Nobody accounted for Lockett. A gain of about seven. Jim Knox. All right, Joel, there's a reason for this. Talked to Bill Snyder right before kicking off the second half. He said, we got to open it up. He said, if we got 95 yards total offense like the first half, we might as well go home. That's why they're throwing the football, guys. They need some big plays. And he also said they need to coach it better. It looks like they're doing that right now early on here in the second half. Okay, so a difference in philosophy for Bill Snyder to start the second half. Thanks, Jim. Klein throwing once again. Double clutch. Is it a double move? And over his shoots, Chris Harbour. Well, the way it started out for K-State, they struggled, to say the least. First two possessions, Joel, they didn't get a first down. It started to open up, though. That third possession of the game, even though they punted, they ran the nine plays. Then they got that ball inside their own territory. After the blocked field goal, they punched it in. And then a punt before the half, just kind of a run-out drive. They weren't trying to do much anyways on that one. It's a third and short. Third and about three. Single set. It's Hubert. Option. Wide side of the field. Klein breaks the tackle. Yeah, I think he's got the nose of the football for the first down. Boy, what an effort by Colin Klein. So Hubert was on the trail, but Klein was never giving it up. A couple of different times as he's running down the heel line, right down the line of scrimmage, you think he's going to get tackled. And then he cuts it up. 
and dives for that yard marker and ultimately gets it. This is the toughness that we talked about at the top of the show. Terrific run by Colin Klein. And the drive has started back at their own 23. Now, a little gadget play, Lockett on the reverse. And good recovery by Texas Tech after a gain of only three. Bush got over there. And the leaders into the locker room, both offensively and defensively. Yeah, John Hubert, he's going to have to find some success here in the second half. Tyson Hartman, he's been all over the field trying to make tackles, especially with how many snaps Texas Tech has had offensively. Spread the defense, which rare when K-State's had a three wide receiver set. And they've got it now on second and eight. He looks one way. And now, escapability. Middle of the field's available. Conan Klein, first and goal inside the five. There's a reason he is seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. Getting up slowly, though, as Davis chopped him low to make the stop. Watch the decision-making from Colin Klein. Tries to go left, then wants to throw it for a second time. Wants to throw it for a third time before he actually tucks it down and runs and finds the green grass. Great decision-making from Colin Klein. You know, normally you're six-five, two and a quarter. You don't run like that. He's a long, lanky quarterback with good wheels. First and goal. First possession of the second half. Looking for a fade, corner of the end zone. Harper's got it. Touchdown, K-State. How about that throw? Let's go, Harper. It was a check at the line of scrimmage. He saw, Colin Klein saw the one-on-one -on -one Harper had on the outside, finds it, and then just delivers an absolute dime on the outside to Harper. That is as good as you can throw it right there. Wow. Colin Klein with more completions on this drive than he had in the entire first half. So we talked about the change in philosophy. With Bill Snyder, as he mentioned to Jim Knox, coming out in the locker room to pay it off. Cantelli makes it a one-point ball game. Got a good one going. What an impressive drive to start this second half. An adjustments made for the Wildcats of K-State. So through the air, K-State makes it close again. Kansas State hangs their hat on, but they did on that last series. Very effective. It'll be Marquez bringing it back. The wide receiver hit early and dropped right past the 20 at the 21. What a burger, what a play. Chris Harper out of the throw. The throw was just sensational, right where you wanted it, that back corner of the end zone. We call it that back box. The quarterbacks, a lot of times in practice, will stand there with a trash can and try to throw touch passes to the back of the end zone, make it in the trash can. That was an easy six-pointer there for Colin Klein. Tremendous throw. So now Deggy back out there after a very successful first half, despite the disastrous start. Man, hits it out once again. It is Torres. Uh, the possessions for the Red Raiders, I talked about it. His second throw of the game was a pick six. Well, after that punt, there was just a lot of scoring chances. Those two blocked field goals, the only reason that Kansas State was able to stay close. Daggy on the play fake, and a wide open Adam James. Boy, he's grown into a tight end. I remember when Adam showed up here in Loving. Wide receiver, good speed. Now he's 6'2", 230, 35, and the leaders for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Eric Ward, a nice first half, and then Terrence Bullitt did a great job defensively really disrupting what Kansas State was trying to do. Ton of time for Deggy. Man, coming back to help him out. The grab made once again by Torres. Those timing routes have been so effective for Texas Tech. Deggy's just throwing that right on time, very accurate. The wide receivers do a great job of running out of their breaks, Joel. Perfect combination. Now Crawford, who already has a career high, in the first half alone, he had 72 yards. His previous career best was 47. And the opportunity, somebody's got to step up with Stevens out of the lineup the rest of the year. The speed is going to be DeAndre Washington. Another play fake on second down. And quickly 
out of the edge he goes and Adam James has it once again and he's right at the marker there's a flag at the end of the play a little play action a run action pass gonna boot the quarterback he doesn't need to go too far because James is open right away we'll see what's going on with a little laundry on the field pass interference by number 86 of the offense it's a 15 yard penalty and it's still second down well they're saying that Torres made contact while the ball was in the air for James didn't look like a pick play from that angle he was the outside receiver on that side and was just starting to block a little bit too early before Adam James had him here's Torres in your screen and he's just going to start blocking too early gets into the cornerback there Alan Chapman very easy call there for the official it's at the 35 after the mark off and now second and better than 20 nothing doing they thought they'd surprise and spread the defense as usual but surprise K-State with a run up the middle by Crawford didn't work so now third and forever K-State trying to make personnel changes late will it burn them Deggy over the middle and just off the hands he was going for Zuzalik the junior from right here in Lubbock great coverage by Ty Zimmerman freshman All-American a year ago closing in on Zuzalik and goes up he's actually the one with the chance there Zuzalik bats it away at the last second you see Zuzalik's hand that's the only reason that that ball wasn't picked off by Ty Zimmerman this is going to be only the second punt of the game for Ryan Erksleben five minutes into the third and a low line drive but it'll be a fair catch call for just the same by Thompson. So we'll come right back to West Texas. Five minutes gone to the third. And K-State gets the ball back, looking for the lead. Pressure's coming from Smith on the edge, 94. He goes back inside, gets the ball out. What a fortunate bounce from K-State. Watch this ball bounce right back to Colin Klein, who didn't go back down all the way when Smith hit him. It's a loss of about three on second down. Delay for Hubert. Man, it'll be another loss. Good speed up front and staying at home. Texas Tech gets their second consecutive tackle for a loss. So Leon Mackey over on that side, turning him in. Texas Tech has been hurt playing man coverage in this half with those underneath routes. So you've seen him go back to zone, trying to keep everything in front of him. This is a perfect time to stay with that zone at 3rd 15. Force Colin Klein to beat you deep. You see his number so far. That's usually for a game about 96 yards. He had 600 passing over the first five this year. Now, pocket protection underneath and well short of the first down to his big tight end, Andre McDonald. But as you said, in, in this territory especially, a punt's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing for Kansas State, but Texas Tech did exactly what they needed to do right there. Stay deep and rally around the short pass. McDonald gets it. He's big, 6'8", 270. Rally up, lots of black hats around the ball. Tackle and force the punt. Zuzalek waiting for the door punt, back at about the 10. Another good one, hang time wise. Fair catch called for. And deep in their own territory, Texas Tech is going to have the ball when we come back in a one point game, 28 27. Mistakes, make some plays with your feet, and this was his best throw, the last touchdown pass to Harper to pull within one point. So Tech, after the good punt by Dorr, has it at the eight. Van DeAndre Washington, their quickest back now, with the injury to Eric Stevens, gets about four on first down. Washington State, top customer this year, grabbing a first down beyond the 20, and taking it in. It's Alex Torres. Paul Wolf, the head coach up there, gets his initial starting quarterback, Jeff Tool, back this week. But yes. they're facing, in my opinion, the best player in college football and Andrew Luck. Running the football. And good yardage after the 29. It's Crawford back into the game. 
adding to a career best already. Wouldn't it be ironic if Texas Tech now runs the football while K-State tries to throw K it? K-State starts to air it out. Now Texas Tech wants to run it every play, and they're having a lot of success against this Wildcat defense. Second and short. Begging with the bullet. And a first down. Grab over there. Take it in by Swindle. Well, coming into the game, K-State, or make it rather Texas Tech, seventh in the Big 12 in rushing. And let's face it, all these years, especially since Mike Leach started here, and now Tommy Tupperville taking over, they're dead last every year in the Big 12 in rushing. But they have been a force on the ground. Better than 170 yards a game, which is an, a major move for them. And boy, talk about a good move by a quarterback. Grab is made. zuzonic has got it. It took a while for him to come across the field, but the patience of Deggie again. Yeah, and he buys some time with his feet. He's able to just move a little bit to his right and allow Zuzalik, who has one-on-one -on -one with Arthur Brown, which is a mismatch for Texas Tech to come open late. Little delay action. Running back slams it. Not much available that time. And in there, that's the bullback, Kenny Williams. He's kind of their fullback, short yardage guy. True freshman out of Pflugerville. Burned his shirt earlier in the year, trying to get him more carries here. Daggy on second and about eight. Good adjustment by the wide receiver. Taken in by Kennard. So they're short of the first down by about two. Second grab of the game for Marcus Kennard. They go deep. Now we talked about it. Nine guys caught balls in the first half alone. Went to nine different options. Joel Myers, Joel Clatt, Jim Knox, and a first down. It's Kenny Williams making his presence felt. Just slams it. <laughs> Getting his way. I, I like the way he runs. Boy, for a young kid, like we said, true freshman, weighs about 215 pounds. It's only 5'9, but he gets in there and goes north and south. Deggy on a deep drop this time. Man, low and away. He's trying to get it to his back in the flat because the route he was looking at over to the near side was taken away from Ward. Well, and this is why it's so hard to play a true freshman like Kenny Williams. He's going to come out of the ball game right now, but they want to play with such high tempo that if you're on the field, you got to stay on the field. So if you put Kenny Williams in, he's got to stay there for about four, five, six plays. Now spread it completely. An empty backfield on second and ten of the 40. Ton of time, middle of the field, and contact. But no flat. So he's trying to get it to Adam James. Yeah, there was a little hand-to-hand -hand both ways. A little bit of contact, but I liked what Arthur Brown did. He targeted the receiver, and then he ran with him deep down the seam. Adam James has got to fight over that as the tight end because that's clearly the route that they've hurt the Wildcats with today. That's where Deggie is going to be looking for the rest of the night, especially in a situation like this, third and ten. Double screen. And does Douglas get it? Yes, he does. Down the sideline with a flag on the play. He's out of bounds. And was it with that block? Was it a hold for Douglas to be able to turn the corner? Right in front of the K-State bench. A personal foul, hands to the face by number 11 of the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty and replay third down. So Swindle, the senior from Oklahoma City. Swindle is on the outside. This is where you're going to see him. Where's his right hand? You see his right hand way up near the face now. It was on the corner of the shoulder pad, actually. That's a missed call by the official. It looked like it was on the face, but it was actually on the corner of the shoulder pad. It was a pretty good hold, though. It was, it was a good hold, but not hands <laughs> to the face. Third for Kansas State. Third and 15 now. Negates the first down. Deep down the middle. Tipped away the last second. Tried to get James. And now, is there a flag? Yes. The time into the tip by Lemur was perfect. But did they hit a defenseless man? Now, was it helmet to helmet? Late hit. A personal foul, unnecessary roughness by number 12 of the defense. It's a 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. 
Ty Zimmerman cited for the personal foul. It was actually number two, Tyson Hartman. Perfect. Ty Zimmerman was called, but number two, Tyson Hartman is coming in. There's Lamar with the great play. Wow. Yep. Hmm. He even turns away from that. That's a poor call by the official. He tried to avoid contact after he was committed to the play. Not much there, but a first down, and it's batted into the air. Latui was there, Volker was there, and it looked like Volker got it. Jordan Volker, the walk-on, top of your screen, just gets his hand up. Also, their tackle in there, Latui. These guys have been fighting hard all night to try to get to the quarterback. Volker's father, Randall, a three-year starter on the offensive line for the Wildcats. Back in the flat and dropped. Crawford getting ready to turn it upfield. Took his hand, have eyes off the ball completely. This is when you start to miss Eric Stevens because that's clearly right in his numbers and he knows it by his reaction. Well, if they don't convert here, field goal unit has not been friendly for Texas Tech tonight. They have had two blocked for 49 and 38 yards. And both by Gidry. Now Daggy trying to buy some time. And he'll just throw it away. That'll save the field goal attempt and avoid the sack of the loss. It's a good pressure. Once again, Meshack Williams flushed him out. So Rafael Gifford, who I just mentioned, and he's gone straight up between it, it looked like between the center and the guard on both occasions. Corona now. Can they get it straight? Did they make the proper adjustment to the blocking? It'll be a 47-yard attempt. It's on its way. Successful. They celebrate in Lubbock. Tech finally got this kick coverage unit, or excuse me, the field goal unit shored up. You see the cross of the legs inside? The lineman's legs crossed. That means there's no seams. Gidry in the first half got through twice because there were seams in the blocking. Texas Tech shores that up, gets three points. So a 47-yard field goal. Tyler Lockett has returned one already 99 yards. Yeah, it was a very competitive game. But it was in Austin. Not like that neutral site, you know, you're talking about there. Cotton Bowl for Oklahoma. Returnable from inside the five. It'll be the two for Lockett. And the coverage better this time. Still he gets it all the way out as he lost it to the end, but maintains possession. Out to about the 28. Now to the gun, first and 10 for the 27 climb. Little dump off for Hubert. And good maneuvering by Hubert. Boy, yards, yeah, yards after contact. That's what you call it, and a good job by Hubert. They have not been able to spring him for the big one yet. He got six on first down. First and ten line is brought by to you by Mazda. This is an important drive for Kansas State. They got to answer those points. Even though it was just a field goal from Texas Tech, they have got to answer this with a nice sustained drive by their offense. Fly. Good play fake. And he's got a great grab. Thompson. Reading it perfectly. But I like Klein's activity in the backfield as well. How about the catch by Thompson going up high? He's only 5'7. They're going to fake the zone read. Colin Klein actually ducks into the line and then stands back up and gives his wide receiver a chance. What a catch right there by Thompson. Wow. Falling backwards onto his back, retaining possession as well. He saw it, read it perfectly, working against Cody Davis, the weak safety. Now Hubert dashes it. He told up the middle, spinning. It'll be first and goal inside the 10. This young man broke up all of Ladanian Tomlinson's high school rushing records in the Waco area. And I said, they haven't been able to really get him loose, and he did that time. 
But this is what a running team does. They take advantage of the blitz. You saw the blitz there by Texas Tech. Finds the seam and Hubert gets north and south and makes them pay. Kansas State now completely turning the tables on Texas Tech as far as yardage in the second half. It'll be first and goal of the eight. And the ball to the ground. Klein again in a little bit of a miscommunication with Huber. Klein pointing to himself says it's my bad. Any indecision by the quarterback in the zone read game is going to produce a ball on the ground. You see he tried to pull it a little bit too quickly there, get too fast with the ball handling. Ball hits the ground. Bill Snyder not happy about that. Loss of a yard back to the nine. Inside of a minute to play in a wild third. Man-to-man -man coverage. They're coming on the blitz. Klein will keep it. Has a man to beat. And he's down inside the two. It'll be at the one, third and goal. What a luxury when you have a quarterback who is that big and can run that well. Going back to the zone read. Klein doing an excellent job of reading when he can find a hole. You see right there, he sees a seam, and he decides to take it himself. Gets up and puts himself in a much better situation for a third and goal. Hubert and Wilson, the fullback, stays in there. Play clock coming down. They just got it off. Short side option. He's in. Touchdown, K-State. And they've got the lead on the road once again on the final play of the third. How impressive was that drive by Kansas State? Capped by an audible by Colin Klein. He calls his own number. The defense over pursues to the left. He finds the seam. Touchdown, Wildcats. Six plays, 73 yards, three minutes off the clock. And that's the strangest part of it all. Fast drives, quick scoring drives. Point after, it's perfect. So K-State leads by a field goal. Man, what a drive by Colin Klein once again. Two of their three possessions. Colin Klein has scored on runs. Through three, very good one going to the Big 12 tonight in Lubbock, Texas. End of three, 34-31, and you're watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. They found Cornelius Douglas down the seam for their first touchdown. They got the running game going, the true freshman. DeAndre Washington finds the end zone, and then a true freshman for Kansas State. He comes back. This is Tyler Lockett, and he takes it the distance. A 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. He turns on the Jets and gets in late, right before the half. Seth Beggy finds himself in the end zone, but then in the second half, Kansas State comes out and throws the ball over with a touchdown in the end zone. And after another methodical drive, a couple of plays made in the pass game, Colin Klein into the end zone. Kansas State offensively much more dynamic in the second half. Here we go. Start of the fourth. And it's going to be Marquez. Back pedaling's going to bring it out anyway. And he pays. He is the fastest on the offensive side. It didn't work that time. Our Geico quote of the game from the athletic director, John Curry talking about his head coach a constant in an unconstant world those who choose to listen see it it works and that has a snowball effect those who didn't listen think hey maybe I should too well it's worked for a long time he has over hundred and fifty wins at Kansas State one of only two coaches in college football right now to have a stint of over 19 years at the same school, the other being Joe Paterno. How about those names that he sits among? Mac Brown, Frank, Frank Beamer, Steve Spurrier, Bill Snyder. Now they just celebrated, and right now the concern is with one of his players down to the ground. Man, they asked him, you okay? Can you get up? Yes, you saw the nod. That's good news. So back up. For K-State is Jared Loomis. Loomis was the one who made the tackle. Here he comes, being blocked in. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, snapped his head back. 
so good to see him. But what a shot. That whiplash effect. Back to Bill Snyder. Back for his third season. It's pretty amazing. With all the transfers they bring in, with a shovel action. And I talk about the fastest guy on the team, needs some touches. Bradley Marquez, at least the fastest on the offensive side. He's another 18 year old, first year freshman. He's from Odessa. And a great athlete. He was selected in the 16th round by the New York Mets in the baseball draft, signed with them, plays in the summer as a professional baseball player, comes back here to Texas Tech in the spring and in the fall. So a sensational athlete. You can see why they try to get him touches. As there was a penalty called against Texas Tech that's going to back them up inside their own 10. So the Markoff keeps it at first down. And now it's going to be first and 17. Just outside their own six. Deggy. And safety valve is Crawford in the flat. So some breathing room. So he won't have to throw out of his own end zone. It's complete to the 13-yard line. Yeah, and just chip away. The first and 20, all you got to do as a quarterback, you just try to chip away in order to potentially move the change. If you try to get it all back and one down, you find yourself at second and 20 or third and 20. So after the good kick coverage, the Red Raiders deep in their own territory. Yeah, breaking the tackle and getting the first down is Alex Torres. He's been a workaholic for Deggy tonight. And did he ever have some yards after contact? They didn't wrap him. This is Chapman, number three. Alan Chapman, the nickelback, who's had to play a ton of snaps, and he just doesn't wrap up. Going to be from the 27. Crawford goes low as he lunges through for about five, out to the 33. It's a three-point lead for Kansas State. But this is very normal. We've seen Tech move the ball, play fast. It's just the fact that they've missed two field goals and been held the field goal on the last drive. Special teams difference in the game. It's complete. Little turn in. Man, it goes to Kennard, Marcus Kennard. Kansas State right now trying to wholesale change their defensive line, do lots of substituting, even though Texas Tech is not substituting. 50 attempts for close to 400 yards now. It's 38 completions. The offense substituted, and the defense did not have time to match up and clear the field. We replayed the down. I didn't see the offense substitute. I think that's what Tommy Tuberville right. is so upset with, is that I thought it was just Kansas State trying to get off the field. It looked like the same 11 on the field for the Red Raiders. And, and that's when the umpire will get over the ball if they do substitute. So the defense has the opportunity. Diggy has it taken away. It's loose. And coming away with it is Kansas State. The opportunistic group once again, Meshack Williams. Coming around the corner. Another junior college player. There's 13 transfers in the two deep on the defense for Kansas State. And Meshack Williams, 245 pounds, just beats the tackle with speed. Mickey Okafer and gets to the ball. Deggy a little bit careless with his mechanics the ball goes into one hand right at the end as he's trying to release that football Meshack Williams takes advantage turnover for the Wildcats now how big is this short field from the 34 second turnover the game for Texas Tech Hubert trying to bounce away man struggles for about two three yards so the last time Colin Klein had a short field. They capitalized. Took it away and got it to the 46. Well, you see right now why Kansas State sits in the top three in most defensive categories. They just force the offense to be perfect time and time again, and it's very tough to do for a college offense. Second and a little more than eight. It's up to the Red Raider defense now. Hubert waited and spins it inside the 30 down to about the 28. So can they hold him to a long field goal try? Well, no after this third down. I love Hubert's patience behind the big offensive line. Watch him basically come to a halt right there and then find the seam to get north and south and finds positive yardage. Sets up his team for a more manageable third down. He can lost, can he, at 5'7"? Trying to locate him. 
So they're hitting half the third down so far and movement. False start. Boy, the mistakes. A false start by number 50 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still third down. And very few long mark-offs, as we talked about it in the first half, Joel. There's Nick Pitts. He's the one that just falters as Colin Klein looks like he's going to come up and actually change the play. That's frustrating for Kansas State. This is not the situation that they're great in at third nine. Colin Klein has to make a play. He gets out of the edge, can he run it? Out of the gun. Protection starting to collapse, and he's down inside the 30. Grab from behind. And making the play, Bush, Dartwan Bush. So here comes the long field goal try, and that's really all you could ask for your defensive unit to keep it a one-score game. Well, they haven't run onto the field yet. Bill Snyder looks like he's going to go for this. He's on the road. He's got a fourth and five at the 29. And will it be a timeout? He's walking down to the linesman like he's going to call the timeout. Here we go on fourth and five. Call a timeout. No. They'll go for it. Climb to the quarterback draw. Won't get it. Red Raiders survive without allowing a point off a turnover. Blake Dees. It's hard to tell if this is a designed quarterback draw or Klein just thought he had green grass. It looks like he's actually looking for his tight end, McDonald, and then just takes off a hair too early. If he waits a second, McDonald was on a little five-yard out route. He would have been open with man-to-man -man coverage. Did Smith influence him on a little twist? Because he was right in his face. Over the middle, intercepted. Going the other way once again. Picked off by Tyson Hartman. So it's given away by Deggy on a second consecutive possession. He had only one interception and 17 touchdown tosses over the first five games of the season. He's got two already tonight. We've already seen Tyson Hartman play so well in the run game, he decides to jump a route. Watch him jump the route. We've seen him sit back how many times tonight? Let the ball carriers catch the ball and then rally up and tackle him. He finally reads the eyes. Dagey stares down the wide receiver. Hartman's there for the INT. So from the 22. And left side up again. A false start by number 70 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still first down. Second time on Hanson. Crowd affecting the offensive line and the communication for Kansas State. Left tackle just starts a little bit too early. Very frustrating. They're not built to come back from first and 15. They're built to stay on schedule. And it's been the five-yard markups most of the night, whether it's offsides or false starts. Joan Reed, Klein, breaking it at the line. May take it the distance. He's hit inside the five. First and goal at the two. Davis got over in time to save the score. Kansas State just out leverages Texas Tech. How about Hubert with the good block? Pinning Blake Dees inside the defense. That's what Paul and Klein reads off of. There's the block right there. Hubert pinning the linebacker inside. Klein with a great cut off of it. Time to make it a two score game. That's 94 yards on 17 carries, right on the average for Colin Klein. Hubert trying to make a miss. And he lunges. He's down to the one. Boy, he's stretched. And he was on top of another body trying to get it in. I don't blame him. A couple of different jump cuts. He's small. He was going backwards. You could tell in his mind he got panicked and said, I can't take a loss here inside the five. And that's when he darted forward. But inside the one, the quarterback's 230. It's time for a quarterback sneak. Second and goal from the one. It is Klein. He should be in. Touchdown, Kansas State. <laughs> 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 so 
So they failed the first time off a turnover. On the takeaway by Meshack Williams, they get the job done this time. Watch them just stay right in that formation. Texas Tech gets a little bit of penetration, but you can't stop that as a defense. Third rushing touchdown of the game for Colin Klein. Now an important extra point for Cantella. And it's a 10-point K-State lead. So inside of 10 left. And boy, what a premium on the next possession, next two in this game for Texas Tech. Turnovers leading to points. Tyson Hartman jumps the route and sets up his offense for a chance at a score. Colin Klein with the quarterback sneak. 10-point lead for Kansas State. Trying to stay undefeated in Lubbock. Establishing yourself as a defense. They play a little bit of a bend, don't break type of style. Stop the run, be efficient, make open field tackles. You see all the white jerseys surrounding the Texas Tech players. And then the second half, they force turnovers. The fumble from Seth Dagey, and then the interception. Tyson Hartman steps in front of the pass from Dagey, takes it in to about the 22 yard line and setting up a score. Tyson Hartman has been amazing tonight seven tackles all solo that interception to set up the score this guy has done it all for them joel that's our peak performance of the night right guy three-time first team academic all big 12. it's going to be marquez two yards in and he'll down into the end zone now out of the gun crawford's not going anywhere 9 45. The positive for the Red Raiders is their tempo, their rhythm, and how many snaps they can get if they click. I just think it's so amazing that a group with 13 transfers in the two deep can play such consistent defense. Now Deggy in trouble. And he's going to throw it away. Did he underthrow it enough for a pick? Yes, he did. Intercepted. Do you believe it? David Garrett's got it. He just tried to throw it away. Seth Deggy had thrown only one interception on the year coming into tonight's ball game. He's thrown three tonight. David Garrett, how about the body control? He gets two feet down. Good receiver. Kansas State so opportunistic with their defense. Their defense has set them up perfectly tonight. They were plus two in the turnover margin. Coming into today, they're plus four tonight. Haven't turned the ball over and forced Texas Tech into those turnovers. So nine and a half to play. Now can they chew up some clock in the process? Klein calling his own number and loses a couple of yards. This is the third consecutive drive to start. Off turnovers deep in Red Raider territory. The 34, the 22, and this time at the 28. Bill Snyder would like nothing else than to pull about three to three and a half minutes off this clock. If he could go 80 yards, you'd want six minutes off. But now just sitting at about the 30-yard line, he wants his offense to stay on schedule and stay on the field. They don't beat themselves. And tonight's game is a perfect illustration of the way they can manufacture things. It's going to be Klein on the zone option. Reed weaving his way all the way to the 20. Short of the first down by two. When you put all three areas together, what they've done defensively and taking the ball away. But let's not forget about the scores defensively, first in the game, early in the game, and then the special teams, the kick return of 99 yards and the two block field goals. Which, that's basically your defensive unit. Remember, that's just Rafael Guidry, a defensive nose tackle that's gotten in for those two blocks. So that defensive unit has set up Colin Klein and these Wildcat offensive players beautifully tonight. Klein with that, so over 100 yards rushing. And now needs two. For a huge first down, another two minutes off the clock. Hubert getting a block from Klein, and he's got the first down. Boy, he stops and starts as quick as you can find. I feel like they were having a tug of war in the backfield. <laughs> Who was going to take the football between Hubert and Klein? It looks like Klein wants to take this ball. I mean, they're way outside of the tackle box, and right there, this is where Hubert, in that vision, he's going to cut all the way back across the grain Klein gets a block in there Hubert goes and moves the chain but more importantly like you said more time off the clock they could seal it here with a touchdown up by 10 already trying to get more points off a takeaway Hubert dashing inside the 10 down to the nine 
And if they do get a touchdown here, it would be their third touchdown off of the turnover because the first point of the game for them came, as you mentioned, on the pick six by Nigel Malone. Texas Tech came into the game first in the conference and first in the country in terms of not turning the ball right. over. Only three turnovers that this offense gave up all year long. They've turned the ball over four times tonight to Kansas State. And, and while we said Kansas State was plus two coming in and plus four tonight, Tommy's team, Tommy Tuberville, they were averaging a plus two per game over the first five of the season. Klein on second at about five. It's Hubert. And chewing up the clock. Inside a seven to play. All three timeouts do remain, though, for Texas Tech. Another strength of Texas Tech that Kansas State has taken away. They were first in the conference, fifth in the country in terms of red zone scoring. Blocking those two field goals. Took advantage of the fact that they had drives that didn't come away with points. That goal, if they can hold them to three, with three timeouts on the board, you can conceivably get two scores. And I'm talking two touchdowns. If they can hold them to three. And it's going to be movement. So it's not going to be third and about three. It'll be third and eight. Tie it end on the right side. McDonald. I think this is the time to let Colin Klein make a play. We've already seen him throw a beautiful ball to Chris Harper for a touchdown tonight. He's been singled up with Eugene Nebo all series long. Harper has. Harper, 6'1", 225. Eugene Nebo, only 5'10", 180 pounds. Six series at the top of your screen. We talked about Kansas State and taking it away, what it's done for their average drive start. The last three deep in Red Raider territory. Klein trying to get outside, won't be able to turn the corner. Good play on the outside. Coming up, it was Blake Dees. 18-year-old, another first-year freshman. It looked like they were trying to set up a shovel pass. Watch Hubert. He looks back for the ball. Colin Klein's got an option. I can run it. I can throw that underneath shovel pass. He decides to run it, but Dees, with great speed, the true freshman, chases him down and forces this field goal attempt. Trying to force Tech into two touchdowns now to get it. And I'm talking about the end result. Cantelli. It'll be a 31-yard attempt, and he pulled it. He pulled it left. Never had a chance. So there is a light in Red Raiderville. It's a missed 31-yard field goal out of the hold of Dore, the punter. And Texas Tech has to do something in a hurry when we come back. This block, which was the second, led to a little bit of a return for Kansas State. It set them up in plus territory, and they went down and scored on that possession. Their offense got seven points out of that possession. So Gidry playing fantastic tonight for the Wildcats. And as you mentioned, either one goes. It's a one-score game for Texas Tech. They're not as desperate. Over the middle, he's got a first down past the 35. And picking it up, first catch of the night for Aaron Fisher. He has not been on the field all that often. For Kansas State, you can't get beat deep here. Do not allow a quick score. Force him to go the distance. Empty backfield on first down. Pocket holding up again and thrown behind his intended target. So Daggy struggling a little bit. It was Fisher again. Thought Hartman had a chance there for another pick. It would have been his second of the half. The ball was thrown behind. If he was targeting the ball there, he could have gone in there for the pick. Now on second and ten. Daggy, one of the few poor decisions. We've seen picks and everything, but usually he doesn't try to tuck it and run it. Yeah, that tells me that his clock is running a little bit quickly right now. You can see it in his eyes. He's trying to go too fast. Part of his game is being patient in the pocket and allowing receivers to come open down the field late over the middle. He's kept Crawford in the backfield on third and ten. And underneath, coming over to help out his quarterback, it was Torres. He's been their most active receiver tonight. Moves the chains, stops the clock. 
Torres has been very efficient for Seth Dagey in Texas Tech tonight. He really came back to help his quarterback. From the 48, Bubble hasn't worked all night. How about this time? It's complete, and he's got about 10 to Douglas. They've, they've gone to it enough. That Megan nine. Lateral pursuit for the Kansas State defense, though, keeps it from moving the chain, so the clock will run. Arthur Brown, you see the speed from the Mike linebacker position. Second and a yard. He's got the first down. And he's got Crawford. His back just circled out underneath. It's to the 29-yard line. This is the point in the field where you want to take a shot down the middle of the field. Attack the safeties, Tyson Hartman and Ty Zimmerman with that deep seam route. Saves the clock. It's Torres. That's his 10th catch of the night. By far the most for Texas Tech. So I mentioned earlier, all the timeouts on the board for both sides. And now, Bill Snyder is going to take one off the board. That's a smart Kansas timeout. Calls their first timeout break the, the rhythm. Break the rhythm. Give your defense a break. Get them over there. Get them some water. Get them a breather. Inning 335 left, and with all three timeouts on the board, if they can score in the next 30, 35 seconds, they don't need an onside kick. Second and six, let's see their strategy, though. Keep it in the ground, Washington, their quick back. Man, he's got a first down. Just inside the 19. Pretty smart play. They know that they can move the chains with that play. The clock will stop, and then they can snap it inside the 20-yard line. Fresh set of downs for Daggy. Looks one way, double move into the end zone, a hold, half the distance to the goal going for Torres. That was a horse collar hold. <laughs> he tried to get anything he could get. Alan Chapman in coverage there, number three. That stops you with 318 left. by number three of the defense. It's a spot foul and an automatic first down. Chapman with his right arm. There's the tug on the back of the jersey. Very easy call from the official. Puts so now, the ball at the six-yard line. Got to do it in a hurry, though. 18 seconds away from the three-minute mark. First and goal. And it's complete. They're moving the clock. It runs. Torres has 12 catches now. Or is that his 11? Make it 11. Deggy now over 60 attempts on the night. Which is usually an equation that you're down, you're treading. Crawford dives. Did he get there? No. Knee down. Inside the one. These are precious seconds for Texas Tech. They bounced down off the same play. Going to run that zone read again. And he won't get there. Third and goal outside of the one. More importantly, though, they're taking another minute off the clock. And because they were having to hurry, remember, it didn't give the replay booth enough time to look at that last play. They try to look at every play. The play for Crawford near the end zone wasn't able to be looked at. Fortunate for Bill Snyder. This was the first and goal snap you're talking about, Joel. And was he down? Yes, good call. So it's going to be Corona. Where is Guidry? Account for him. Short field goal of 19 yards and a one score game with 2.32 to play. Now the decision for the onside kick because they had to use a timeout. So the long drive. Stalls. It's all in how confident you are in your defense, whether you're going to onside kick or not, if you're Tommy Tuberville. Yeah, tonight's game on AFN, American Forces Network, broadcasting to U.S. Armed Forces all over the world. 175 countries aboard ships at sea. And thank you once again for all you do and the opportunity for us to bring it your way. Joel Myers, Joel Klatt, Jim Knox, 2.32 to play. 
Seven point game. Boy, those two missed field goals because they were blocked by Rafael Guidry. 6'4, 300 pounder, and Joel on both blocks. He went flush up the middle, barely touched. Poor blocking by Texas Tech. Clearly, Tommy Tuberville, as we talked to him before he went in at halftime, was very upset with his protection units for getting those field goals blocked. And that is the difference in the game right now. Wow. State's going to call a timeout. That's a good timeout by Bill Snyder. So they'll talk it over once again. Second timeout used by K-State. They used one defensively, trying to break the rhythm. As Texas Tech was driving on that last series. And what does it mean to K-State? They're trying to keep pace right now with Oklahoma and Oklahoma State. Two undefeated as Oklahoma State 6-0 following their win over Texas in Austin today. K-State trying to get to 6-0. Oklahoma in Lawrence, you'd have to think after the earlier lead we heard about, it will be a 6-0 record for the Sooners. It's such a huge game for Kansas State. Next week they've got Kansas on the road nothing against Kansas but you think Kansas State can handle that game and then Oklahoma at home if they win this game tonight they can find a way with 232 left Bill Snyder's gonna find himself undefeated against the Oklahoma Sooners at home late in the season and all they have after Oklahoma is they're in Stillwater then they've got Texas A&M and then they're in Austin so it gets easier <laughs> <laughs> now will it be an onside kick only one back, Thompson. The hands team out there for Bill Snyder. Here it goes, and it's popped high into the air. Loose ball, recovered by Texas Tech. Do you believe it? It was kept alive by Torres. Torres kept it alive. But the hop, man, what a job by Corona. It's covered and picked up. And what a play for the Red Raiders. Swindle. It starts with the kick. This is a sensational kick by Corona. Look how high that ball goes. Hartman then has to wait for it. See how long he waits for it. And it was Torres that comes in and keeps it alive. Swindle with the recovery. And now the Red Raiders are in business. Offense back on the field. Down by 7. 2.31 to play. Daggy. Can they recover? Crawford's going to run on first down. Didn't surprise anybody again to the yard. Torres, though, in a jump ball, took it away. That's it. Hartman's trying to go up and get it at its highest point, but Torres does a great job tipping it back. On second and long, short one, Torres. Clock runs. Huge third and four. First and ten line brought to you by Mazda. Plenty of time for Texas Tech. The last thing they want to rush into a mistake. Third and four. Man thrown behind his intended target. He was trying to get Ward. Ward has been very quiet. Not many touches in the second half. Well, he's been going up against Nigel Malone, who almost had his second interception of the game right there. He's already got four on the year. Kansas State can ill afford a mistake right now. You can see him playing very smart football. They don't want to get beat deep. By this, Seth Daigie in Texas Tech. This is the ball game, basically. Fourth and about four. It's a straight four-man rush. Daigie, a lot of time, and overshoots his back. He tried to get it to Crawford. Kansas State comes up with a stop. So with two timeouts on the board, minute 53 to play. It goes back to the Wildcats. How about the rush? They've been out there all night long. And Vi Latui at 280 pounds just does not quit and forces Daigie into a throw that he doesn't want to make. And Jolie had Crawford easily early and then went late. And all he needed was four. Crawford turns around, he's wide open. Away from Trey Walker. It's to the midfield stripe. Timeout will be called immediately. And now one remaining. Oh, no. Texas Tech is not using it yet. I'd use it early. There's no question I'd be calling a timeout right now if I was Texas Tech. I only say that because then you force Bill Snyder into decision if there is a third and long. Whether you're going to throw or run. Right. Absolutely. Going to be second. Long seven. 
milking the clock. And they're going to take it down to a two or two seconds yeah. or one on the clock. Inside of four seconds, there's no doubt. Quarterback run all the way, Colin Glide. And here comes the third down. Now you stop the clock. 54 seconds left. It's a long field if they don't get it. And you force a punt. So one timeout left for Texas Tech. Our Academy Sports and Outdoors, right stuff play of the game. And it was special teams. No surprise there. And Lockett. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett really sparked this team because at this point, Texas Tech had it rolling. And the momentum goes all the way to Kansas State because of the tremendous vision and decisiveness of Lockett right now. He's going to cut back, find the lane, and turn on the Jets. And the true freshman finds himself in the end zone. I thought it was a completely different game after that point because that's what kept them close to Texas Tech who clearly had the momentum. So now two yards away from a win. Convert on the first down and it is over. No doubt this is Colin Klein territory right now. He is not handing this ball off. He doesn't even have Hubert to the back there. It's only Wilson the fullback and he's following Wilson right side. It's over. Colin Klein and K-State have the win and the first down. That was easy. Wow. Too easy on third and two in that crucial spot. Let's remember Tommy Tuberville has a very young defense over there. They're not very good against the run. But Bill Snyder brings the Wildcats in and ends a five-game losing streak to Texas Tech here in Lubbock. Haven't beaten the Red Raiders since 2000. And the clock winds down on a 6-0 start for K-State. So the surprise continues for the Wildcats. No one could have anticipated at the midpoint of the season, basically, they'd be undefeated, Joel. And how about the four quality wins in a row for Kansas State? On the road for Bill Snyder against Miami, the game in which Ja'Cory Harris came back after the suspension, they beat him. They come back, Baylor, Robert Griffin III, he's getting all the hype, Kansas State beats him. Missouri comes to town, Kansas State beats him. Kansas State goes on the road, face a very good Texas Tech team who had only lost one game. They beat them. And for the fifth time in Bill Snyder's career at Kansas State, they are 6-0. and And I like the word you used in particular, beat them, because they don't beat themselves. They do not beat themselves. They force you to make plays. Bill Snyder is one of the greatest college football coaches in history. The turnaround at Kansas State early and what he's done now in his second stint with the Kansas State Wildcats. Phenomenal. Let's join Jim Knox. Knoxie. All right, thank you, Joel. Coach, congratulations. You told me at half, if you didn't get more than 95 offensive yards in the second half, you might as well go home. Well, you got 246 total yards of offense in the second half. You got to be extremely pleased with the way your offense opened it up and performed. Well, we had a couple of possessions down here going in that we could have put the ball game away with our offense after our defense did a great job of getting turnovers and we didn't do it. So I'm pleased with the 240 yards or whatever it was and I'm pleased that we scored some points but I'm not pleased that we couldn't get the ball in when we had a chance down here to put the game away. And something you said you're pleased about as a defense. You know Seth Dagey going into the game only one interception. You guys picked them off three times tonight. Well I thought you know we started the ball game that way and got the return. We've done that I think three times now in three ball games very early like that. I'm awful proud of our defense. They had, I don't know how many snaps they took, but I, it had to be 100 plus. And our defense was, I mean, we were tired. There's no doubt about it. But I'm proud of them because they fought back. They played. They made some plays when it was made a big difference. And we did some good things. We were inconsistent on in every facet of it, but we did some good things in special teams that made a difference. The kickoff return, a lot of it was good. Way to go, Coach. Congratulations. Appreciate the time, Joel. All right, Jim. Well, they're making plans right now for the ticker tape parade in the Little Apple of Manhattan, Kansas, after this upset. 6-0, Kansas State. Wasn't quite 100 snaps. It was 90, 96, but he was right on. And how about Viola Tui on the fourth down? The motor kept going. 96 snaps into this game, <laughs> forcing Daigie into a poor throw and a poor decision ultimately won the game for the Wildcats. So the Wildcats with the road victory that you were just talking about. Next weekend, full slate.
It all starts Oklahoma State, Mizzou, our FX game of the week. College football Saturday, Kansas State taking on Kansas, Oregon, Colorado. And a nightcap, Oregon State with Washington State. For Joel Klatt, Jim Knox, I'm Joel Myers. Thanks for joining us in Lubbock, Texas. K-State prevails by seven. 41-34. You've been watching Big 12 College Football Saturday presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. So long, everybody.